Ladies and gentlemen, I heard a rumor that you want to start playing Dead by Daylight. Or maybe you've already started, but you are looking for some help getting into the game. Well, you're in the right place because today we're going to go over everything you need to know to get started in the game. First, Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical PvP game. The asymmetrical part refers to the fact that it's four players against one player. Now, generally in these scenarios, one player is supercharged strong and the other four are weak and that's how it balances itself out. But the general premise is that you have to land in with four survivors and try to escape before the killer, which is the other player on the other team, kills everyone and stops them from escaping. On the main menu, you'll be asked to choose between playing survivor and playing killer on which queue you want to jump into. And if you select survivor, you'll have a long list of survivors to choose from. They have customization options and different perks that allow them to change their play style, but we'll go over that over after the basic gameplay. And if you choose killer, there's a long list of killers to choose from as well. The difference here being that every killer has a different power or ability. You may even recognize some from popular media like Ghostface coming from The Scream, IP, Demogorgon from Stranger Things, Pyramid Head from Silent Hill, and so on. So let's jump into the game as a survivor and go over the objectives. As a survivor, you will spawn into the game with three other survivors, and there will be seven broken generators on the map. Your goal as a survivor is to find five of them and fix them to get them working, which will open an escape route for you and allow you to get out of the trial. Generators look like this, and to fix them, you simply walk up to them and put your primary input, depending on what platform you're on, hold it down, and it'll start to repair. Periodically, you'll get skill checks that you'll have to hit in order to progress the generator. It will be a circle with a target mark on it. If you miss the target mark, it will be a bad skill check. The generator will regress, and it will alert the killer of your location. If you hit the good area, which is the thin white area, it will be a good skill check, which will do nothing but just continue a progression. But there's also a small, great skill check area, which is harder to hit, which gives you a little bit more progression and has some interaction with some of the gameplay. So you'll see it right there. That's the skill check you'll receive. So you just need to keep holding down the button to get the generator all the way fixed up, hitting all the skill checks you can along the way. And once you're done with the bar, the generator will pop, usually causing some change in the map or generally just in that progression. You can see in the bottom left, I now have four more generators as a team to get done. And that's how generators work. You need to get five of the total seven to get the exit gates open. As you get near to the killer, you'll enter what's called the terror radius. As you get closer and closer, the, the radius gets bigger. The intensity of the music gets stronger. The heartbeat grows faster and faster. So as you go closer, you see it getting louder, more intense. The heartbeat's going faster and faster. This lets you know how close the killer is. Do keep in mind that some killers are considered stealth killers, which means they'll be able to get near to you without you be able to hear the heartbeat. If the killer finds you, you'll enter what's called a chase. If he hits you once, you'll go into the downed, the injured state. If he hits you again, you'll go from injured to downed and beyond the ground. To escape the killer, you have a few choices. All killers run faster than you do on foot. However, they can't vault over pallets like you can. So you want to use these as they go down as an option to move around. Dropping the pallet will stun the killer if they're near it. And you can also vault over windows when in pursuit to escape the killer. The killer does go over windows slower than you do. But just know if the killer wants to catch you, they eventually will. Running from the killer like this is called looping, using as much of the space around you as you possibly can to keep the killer away from you. Once down, the killer will pick you up and take you to a hook. You can only be hooked three times in total after every game. And once you've hit the third time on the hook, your time in the game is up and you'll be taken up into the sky. Windows can be entered in three different speeds. If you are walking and you go up to the window, you will go over it silently. If you're running at the window but get a bad angle, you'll do a medium vault, which is fast and does notify the killer of your location. If you're running and you hit the center of the, the window just right, you'll slide over it for a fast vault, which has the smallest window of hitbox for the killer to get you and is the preferred option when you're in a chase. In a pinch, you can enter lockers, which will hide you from the killer. Doing so quietly will lower your option of being found. But if the killer opens the locker and finds you inside of it, you will immediately be put on the shoulder of the killer and taken to a hook. Also note, if you enter a locker while injured, your whimpers of pain will be heard by the killer, but they will be pretty silent. So good killers will still find you if you're injured and sitting in a locker. You can heal injured survivors by walking up to them and holding the button just like you do with the generators. And there are various ways to be healed through items and through abilities as well. You will still get skill checks during this process. And if you miss one, you will stop the heal and the killer will be notified of your location. Some killers and interactions will require you to mend. You'll see a yellow HP bar on top of your name. If you don't mend yourself in time, you will fall to the ground. 
and there are various ways to trigger this. If a survivor is hooked, you can see them on the map through walls. Another survivor will need to come over to you, pick you up, and get you off the hook. Simply walking up to the survivor, pulling them off the hook, and allowing them to escape. The unhook you just saw is generally considered an unsafe unhook because I pulled them off in front of the killer. However, I do have a perk that allows me to get away with it. Once on the killer's shoulders, you can wiggle to try and escape. Sometimes if you buy enough time for a survivor on the shoulders, you can actually prevent them from being put on the hook because they will wiggle off. You'll find chests that you can open that'll give you a free item, but they take a second to unlock before you can get the item yourself, and it does notify the killer with sounds, but no visual impact. Throughout the map, you'll find totems, usually five of which on the map itself. When they are not lit up like this, they are called dull totems, and you can cleanse them because there are ways for these to light up later in the game, but if they're dull, they are not causing you any harm. However, the totem is lit up, which means it's on fire and making more of a fiery sound to it, that means that the killer has a perk that's called a hex perk and is causing your team harm for as long as it exists. You'll need to find the hex totem and destroy it. In the first phase of being on the hook, you can try to escape. You get three chances from full HP. It has a very low chance of success, so generally is to be avoided, and there are perks that interact with this. And when you enter the second hook phase, you just have to fight for your life until you get saved. Once down, you can recover yourself up to about 95%, and then someone will have to come pick you up on their own. The best thing to do here is usually to recover as far as you can so someone can get you up instantly if the killer's right behind them, and then you can run away. Once the last generator has been fixed, you'll see the exit gates flash for a moment, and then you'll be able to open them up as a survivor. To get them open, a survivor needs to hold on to the exit gate handle until the gate opens. The handles are on the wall right next to the gate, and once it's fully charged up, the gate will open, and you can exit by walking through the final barrier. However, once the gates are opened or the hatch is closed by the killer, the end game collapse phase will begin. A timer bar will appear at the top of your screen that tacks down, and when it's done, any survivors that are still in the trial will be killed instantly. This mechanic is just to make sure that people don't grief each other or troll each other for too long when the game is over. So this gate's gonna open. There's the end game collapse. You can see the ground starting to glow and there's a bar at the top. You now are on a timer to get everyone out. If the timer ends, all survivors in the match will die. If you're the last survivor in the match, you'll see a hatch icon appear in the bottom left. There's other re requirements that may be filled to spawn the hatch. Once the hatch is up, you can simply jump in it to escape. The killer can also close the hatch, which will prevent you from escaping from it. But it's a nice little one versus one scenario where you won't be able to get the gates open. You can find the hatch and jump into it, which looks like this. The hatch is open, making a noise so you can see it, and then you can jump into it and escape. As the killer, your job is to prevent all four survivors from escaping, but if they do escape, try to kill as many as you can. Remember, it takes three hooks to kill a survivor from full until dead, and you, want to, you can stop the generators from regressing by kicking them, which forces them to go backwards. Survivors that run will leave scratch marks on the ground that look like this. This is where you can see where they go. As a survivor, you wanna make sure that you're not running if the killer is nearby, so you can prevent yourself from being spotted. If a pallet drops on you, you will be stunned instantly, and you'll have to break pallets and walls in order to get through. Once you down a survivor, pick them up by standing over their body, walk over to a hook and place them on the hook. If the survivors progress a generator, you can walk up to it and kick it to damage it, and this will start the progress of the generator going backwards in regression. If you see the hatch spawn early without being open, keep in mind the location so you can come back and close it later. But that just covers the gameplay. Now let's go into the customization of each character so you know what your builds will look like. Each player, whether they're a killer or a survivor, is able to pick four perks to bring them with them into a match. These perks all do different things and have very interesting interactions and synergies. You can end up making some really interesting and fun builds as you go into the trial. There are effectively two different sets of perks to choose from. General perks, which have access to all characters at baseline, and then shareable perks, which come from individual characters. Each killer and survivor will provide three shareable perks that once unlocked on that survivor or that killer can be shared and unlocked on all other killers or survivors. For example, Twins has three teachable perks here that once unlocked can be taught to other killers to use in their builds. Thus, collecting all the perks from every survivor and killer will give you more access to more build combinations once you all have those unlocked on a single character. To unlock perks and shareable perks, you must progress the blood web, which will push forward the level of the character that you're currently working on. As you move through the blood web, you will spend blood points, but as you get higher up in the blood web, the blood web will start to consume what you don't take. Shareable perks are unlocked at levels 30, 35, and 40 for each character, and once unlocked, must then be unlocked on other characters once they've been 
flagged as shareable. And if you're a masochist, you can actually prestige your characters to unlock bloodied skins, which is the center icon here and is available once you've reached the max level of level 50 on a character. Next, you can bring offerings into the match, which are blessings that affect only that match individually. You can do things like protect the loss of your items, go to a specific map, or increase the amount of blood points you'll get for that trial. Survivors have access to items that they can bring into the match, whether it be a key that allows them to unlock the hatch if it's closed, maps that reveal things on the map, flashlights for stunning the killer, med kits for healing themselves, or toolboxes that allow them to progress generators faster. Select an item and add up to two add-ons to it, which will modify it in some ways, like allowing a toolbox to be used for longer before it is consumed. Killers, on the other hand, do not have items, but they do have a unique power that is unique to every single killer. You can then use add-ons just like you would for items on a survivor that increase the power of that killer. Each of these add-ons is unique to the killer itself and can have some very powerful effects on the way you play your killer. Playing in 2021 means utilizing the rift that is accessed, which is equal parts challenges and a battle pass you'll find here. I'm sure if you've been playing any games online, you're used to how battle passes work, but the rift is a little bit different for challenges. When you just open up the rift, which will be progressed over the course of four, three or four months, you'll unlock challenges that you'll select as your active challenge to play the challenge during a match will give you bonus rift progression as well as bonus blood points. Each day you'll unlock daily rituals that can be completed for bonus blood points. You'll see these appear every day that you log in. You can decline them or add more, but this is basically a daily quest system. One more thing to be aware of is you hop into the shop, which is mostly cosmetics. You can go to the Shrine of Secrets, which allows you to unlock teachable perks without having to level that specific character, and it will cost a soft currency that you will unlock during the game. So if you want to get a specific perk that's very good, but don't want to level that character up, you can find it in the Shrine of Secrets, which does rotate often. Lastly, the roster for survivors and killers is always being updated. About every three months or so, a new killer and a new survivor combination will be released in a new DLC chapter. The most recent is the Trickster and Yunjin Lee, but it's cool because it unlocks three new teachable perks for survivors and for killers which allows for more build variety as the game progresses. And that does it for Dead by Daylight. Hopefully this gets you right into the game and gives you all the basics you need to get started and start loving the game. There's a lot more to cover around looping and how to use maps, how tile sets are spawned and how to utilize them best, and how to counter each individual killer as well as builds and other things. But I think for this video, this is a good jump start for getting into the game in 2021. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.